There we go. Praise the Lord, one and all. It is 3 o'clock Central Standard Time. Here in the great state of Texas, we greet you this afternoon in the marvelous name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. From Grace Oasis, also known, legally known as the One Church in Christ Jesus Incorporated. Amen. We are so glad to have you with us today for a time of worship and the Word, I believe. You will hear from heaven today. I believe your soul will be blessed by the message uh, that we will be bringing. And uh, I hope you'll take the time, get comfortable. If you want to grab a cup of coffee or something, grab a cup of coffee. I couldn't do that even if I were worshiping from home because I might get happy and shout and spill coffee all over the place. Amen. Folks, I want to tell you today, it is not necessary by any means that you be in the presence of other believers to shout or to dance or to give God the glory or to experience the manifestation of the Holy Ghost. I've talked about this many times. We've had people come into our church over the years who have told me, oh, I grew up in Pentecost, praise God, I've had the Holy Ghost for so long, and boy, they just bragged about their spiritual credentials, as it were. And yet, uh, I never one time saw that person, not one time, get in the Spirit or get happy or experience God in any kind of a way except that they were following somebody else. And you say, well, pastor, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. No, there's nothing wrong with that, but that, that says something to me. That tells me something about that individual. If you can't shout until somebody else is shouting, honey, there's something wrong. If you can't dance till somebody else dances, there's something wrong. You need to pray that God will liberate you in the Holy Ghost so you can worship Him in spirit and in truth regardless of what anybody else is doing. Amen. Mm -hmm. You don't need to wait on other people. You don't need to wait on other people in order to obey God. You don't need to wait on other people in order to sound the trumpet, let me tell you, sometimes God wants you to be the first. Amen. God wants you to lead instead of follow. And I've spent years in this church trying to teach people to take the lead, you know, to be leaders, not simply to follow everybody else and to follow suit. And if you're going to be genuinely spiritual, if you're genuinely going to operate in the gifts and manifestation of the Holy Ghost, then you cannot be afraid to let God move wherever God wants to move, whenever God wants to move. Some of the best prayer meetings I've ever been in in my life were in homes. I told you before, I used to fellowship with Sister uh, Chambers in East Texas when I was living there in East Texas. And she was a woman full of the Holy Ghost and power. I mean, this lady didn't just have the Holy Ghost, she had the power, honey. Let me tell you right now, if you heard some of the testimonies that she had to share, they would set your soul on fire. She, in her 80s, said, I mean, that lady had lived a lot of life going back to the early years of the Pentecostal movement, and she'd experienced God in so many wonderful, powerful, just glorious ways. And I used to love for her to share her testimonies, things God had done for her, like saving her husband and filling him with the Holy Ghost on his deathbed. Amen. She was married to the man for nearly 50 years. He tried to murder her three times. He tried to kill her. 
over the course of their marriage. And yet, on his deathbed, he called for her. She came running in the bedroom, and he lifted his hands toward heaven, tears streaming down his face, and began to speak with other tongues, says the Spirit of God gave him the utterance. That's the kind of Pentecost we need in the world today. Because she kept praying for that man. She kept holding that man up. She wasn't going to... She wasn't going to let the devil have his soul. And she was going to fight for him. Oh, I want to tell you, Sister Chambers and I, we'd be sitting in her living room and talking, and all of a sudden we would fall into a spirit of intercession, and we would drop to our knees and we'd begin to pray. And I mean, we had some Holy Ghost prayer meetings. Sometimes someone else from the church would be visiting her while I was there, and all three of us would have a Holy Ghost prayer meeting. There were times even at my great aunt's house, there was a time that we had an outpouring of the Holy Ghost that started at 11 o'clock that night, or 10, was it 10 o'clock? Now I forget, I'm getting old. Anyway, 10 or 11 o'clock that night, but this much I remember, it didn't stop till 6 in the morning. And we had to get up and go to Sunday school for 9.45. And I'm going to tell you, we got up and we went to the house of God and we were charged. We were so on fire, we couldn't stand it. And the same power that God had poured out on us in, our, in her house that uh, morning, He poured out in the church in that morning service and we had a Holy Ghost service. People, I'm going to tell you, we need to get out of this mindset that God is God in the church. And then when we leave the church house, all of a sudden everything is different. Everything then is calm and cool and everything then is collected and peaceful and quiet. No, 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 no. I worship God how I worship God. Amen. I worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Regardless of whether I'm in my car or whether I'm in my home, I'm going to worship God in spirit and in truth. The Word of God said that is what God is seeking. People who will worship Him in spirit and in truth it has nothing to do with whether you're in the church house or not. And I'm going to tell you, if it takes a certain number of people in the building for you to be able to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth, there's something wrong with your spirituality. Mm -hmm. There is. There's something wrong with your spirituality. If you can't go to church, oh, bless God, I went to visit this little church. I didn't realize they only had five or six people there when I went. And I mean, I just, I couldn't get into it. Well, <laughs> then there's something wrong with your walk with God if you couldn't get into it because of the number of people in the building. Honey, the number of people in the building don't amount to squat. The Word of God says, where two or more are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. It don't take a whole lot of folks for God to get in on the party. That's right. So it's a shame if it takes a whole lot of folks for you to get in on the party. Some of the most powerful experiences I've ever had have been with small groups of people. Amen. Oh, I'm telling you, I'm a little fired up today.